Okay, we get a bit of a break, a bit of a break from the calculation stuff in this section. This is predicting which direction a reaction will go. If you have a reaction where there are two acids and two bases, then in a way you have two different chemicals fighting over which direction, which way the equilibrium is going to fall. On this side we have the acid HA. It wants to give away a hydrogen to B and force these two things to happen. But as soon as you make an HB, it goes, wait a minute, I'm an acid too. It's my job to give away hydrogen. I should give you back this hydrogen and force the reaction back in this direction. So we have HA, the acid, trying to push the equilibrium to the right, saying, no, take my hydrogen, while HB is pushing in the other direction, saying, no, you take my hydrogen. It's a fight, and we have to determine who's stronger to determine who's going to win this thing. If we knew the acid constants for these two, we could compare them, and whichever side had the stronger, the higher acid constant would be the winner. But in this case, they haven't done that. Instead, they're working the other way and saying, we will tell you, the products are favored in this reaction, meaning HA is winning. That means if we had an acid base table, you would find HA on it, and it would be higher up than HB. A is a stronger, HA is a stronger acid, it has a higher acid constant. That's why it's able to force the reaction to the right. So, you remember when we were doing redox reactions and we had to rank oxidizers and reducers by doing this? Same idea. We just found that HA is a stronger acid than HB. Now let's see what else we can learn. C and A fight next, those two acids. And again, the products are favored, which means this acid is stronger again. It's able to force the reaction to the right. That means HC is an even stronger acid than HA is. It goes up here. So now our ranking order is C, then A, then B. Now, D and C fight, and now we have a problem because the reactants are favored. What does that mean? It means C is stronger than D. It's able to force the reaction in this direction, away from itself. That means D is stronger than C, but that means it could go here, or it could go here, or it could go here. So this is not all that helpful. I'm just going to put a star next to that one, and we'll come back to it if we have to. Does this tell us anything? This is D and B fight, and the reactants are favored. So this reaction goes to the left. That means acid B is stronger than acid D. So HD is all the way at the bottom. So there's our order. It turns out we didn't need this one. This told us that D was lower than C, which is not a surprise. The, they all are. This one told us exactly where D goes. It's the lowest of all, the lowest of the four. So the acid's in order of decreasing strength. Well, HC is the strongest. HA is next. After that is HB. And the wimpiest acid of all is HD. It is possible to do this with the bases as well. Um, I'll show you this once. This this is almost never worth it, but I'll show you once just so you can say you've seen it. If we do this with reference to the bases, then the idea is this B is saying, I will steal the hydrogen and take the reaction this way. I will turn myself into HB. When that happens, A says, wait a minute, well now I have room to steal a hydrogen, I will force the reaction to go back to the left. So now we're having a competition between A minus and B minus to see who is the strongest base. If the products are favored, that means B is a stronger base than A. Now remember, we're looking at the right side of our acid base table now, where the strongest bases are down at the bottom. So that would mean we'd write that B minus is a stronger acid, stronger base, sorry, than A minus. I just casually lined these up. You're going to notice that I'm building the same table as I do this. B being a lower, stronger base, meaning lower on the page, is the same as over here saying B is a weaker acid because it's lower on the page. For this next one, 
If the space stuff is weirding you out, just skip ahead. I, I'm only going to do it once, and it's not critical to know it. If you can do it from the acids, you can always do it from the acids, but I thought I'd show you this just to be complete. In this one, we're saying A is a base, and it's trying to pull the reaction this way, turn itself into HA. On this side, C is a base trying to push the reaction back in the other direction. The products are favored, which means A beats C. Meaning over on this side, A is a lower base, a stronger base, than C is. If we do this third one, it tells us something about C and D that isn't useful. It tells us that D is a stronger base than C, but we don't know where to put that. And this last row says we have base B trying to run the reaction this way and base D trying to run it back to the left. Reactants being favored tells us that D is a stronger base than B is. So down here we put D lower on the page because that's where the strongest bases go. Okay, So you can construct these tables working in acid mode or base mode and people will almost always use acid mode. I certainly will. Okay, this is the same thing again. Some of these are real acids, like uh, hydrophosphoric acid, and some of them are made up stuff, but it doesn't matter that much. We're going to get all of our information from these reactions anyway. H3P is an acid, and HY is an acid. And if the products are favored, it means the reaction's going this way. So H3P is a stronger acid than HY. This one, our acids are, let's see, H2P. I know that's an acid because it's giving away a hydrogen and turning into this. The other one is HY is an acid and it's trying to turn back into Y minus by giving away a hydrogen. The reactants are favored, meaning this reaction goes to the left, meaning HY is the stronger acid here. So HY is higher up than H2P. And for the last one. What are our acids? This has to be the acid on the left. It's the only thing with any hydrogen. And on the right side, we have HZ. The products are favored, so that means the reaction is going to the right. H2P minus is our strongest acid here. It's stronger than HZ. OK, so this is our strongest acid. This is our weakest acid. Now look out. They try to get you with this question. They aren't asking about acids, they're asking about bases. These are our acids. If we want the bases, we have to work them out. If H3P is an acid, then its conjugate base is H2P minus. If this is an acid, then there's the base. If this is an acid, then here's what it looks like after giving away hydrogen, or it's the conjugate base form. And if this is an acid, then this is its conjugate base. So the strongest base is Z minus. The next strongest base is HP2 minus. The next strongest base is Y minus. And they should have given us one more blank because we got one more base, H2, H2P minus. Okay. So please build a table like this. It's very easy to get screwed up by an unexpected question when you have a ranking problem like this. If you create a mini table that has the strongest acids and the strongest weakest acids and then the bases on the other side and you have all that pretty, it makes these questions a lot safer. It really stings to do all this work and get the list and then lose the point because you answered the wrong thing or because you went in the wrong direction. Make it look like your acid base table in the book, then it's familiar, you'll know what to do. Okay, HSO4 and HSO3. This is a, if you put HSO4 and HSO3, here's the thing. Both of these are capable of being acids because they both have hydrogen. Both of these are capable of being bases because they both have a negative charge. So. You can think of this as either an acid fight or a base fight, and I will normally think of it as an acid fight. I find that easier. So what's happening here is HSO4 saying, here, take one of my hydrogens. HSO3 saying, no, you take one of my hydrogens. And then they start pushing and shoving. Who's going to win? 
who is the stronger acid? Well, if you look on your acid base table, neither of these is top six, but HSO4 is close. It's the third weak acid after hydronium. So this is our strongest acid. It has a higher K than HSO3 does, which means it gets to be the acid today. It gets to give away a hydrogen. HSO3 gets to take a hydrogen. And that should be our reaction. So which of these is a possibility here? Yeah, they are, they're all the same on the left, so that's not... It's not worth looking at the left side. We want one that'll produce sulfate. These both do. And H2SO3, these both do. So it's one of the ones one of these last two. And the question is, will it be more or less than 50% ionization? Okay, so what we have here is a reaction with two species. Let's just write this down. Think about it for a minute. Whoops, sorry. Just HSO4. So, we have two substances here. Either one could be an acid, because they both have hydrogen. And either one could be a base, because they both have negative charge. So, what's going to happen? Well, if you go to your acid-base table, and you look down the left side to see what your strongest acid is. Between these two, you should find HSO4 is a stronger acid. You find it first, and then you don't find hydrogen sulfite ion until like halfway down the second page. So of these two things, HSO4 is the stronger acid, and so it should give away hydrogen. Because when these meet, they're both, you could think of this as a base fight or an acid fight, but I, I'll think of it as an acid fight because we're talking about acid strength. The HSO4 is saying, here, take one of my hydrogens, and the HSO3 is saying, no, I'm an acid, you take one of my hydrogens, and then they start to push and shove. And the acid constants tell us who's going to win. In this case, it's the HSO4. It's going to give away a hydrogen, so it will turn into sulfate. And the HSO3 will gain a hydrogen, and feel bad about it because it was trying to be an acid, and it will turn into H2SO3. So those are our products, which means this is not the right reaction. It doesn't have SO4 in it, and this isn't right either. It could be either C or D here. So the next part of this is, now that we have this equilibrium, will this react most of the way or only a little bit of the way? Between these two, HSO4 is stronger, but the larger contest here is now that we have this whole reaction, HSO4 is the acid on the left side, which is trying to turn itself into sulfate. Over on this side, though, we have H2SO3, which is trying to change itself back into HSO3. So when it comes to the equilibrium, the question is, can HSO4 push the reaction faster to the right? Or will H2SO3 push it faster back to the left? If you compare these two, you'll find H2SO3 is actually a stronger acid than HSO4 minus. It's one line above on the acid base table. So if this, H2SO3, is our strongest acid, it means the equilibrium is actually going to lie well to the left. And that means we would say less than 50%, meaning less than half only a minority of these molecules will actually react and go over to the right side. Most of them will stay over here on the left side because H2SO3 is stronger, meaning even if you do make some sulfate in H2SO3, generally those will quickly jump back to the left side. This will go, wait a minute, I'm a pretty strong acid and you're totally a base. I'm going to give you a hydrogen and we're going to change back into this form. So most of the molecules will stay piled up on the left side and you'll get very little product.
Okay, species that behaves as either an acid or a base is... This rule isn't 100%, but... Okay, here's a part that is 100%. If you are going to be an acid, you have to have some hydrogen to give away. So CO2 cannot act as an acid at all, and uh, phosphate ion can't either. So it's got to be one of these two. If you're going to be a base, generally that means you need a negative charge. Most bases have negative charge. That is why they're able to attract a hydrogen and hold on to it. Now that's not true for everything because ammonia is a pretty effective base and doesn't have any negative charge. Water is also lacks a negative charge but can act as a base. So that rule's not flawless, but it's a pretty good general guide. So this would be my call for acid or base. It's an acid because it could give away a hydrogen and turn into carbonate ion, and I know that's a thing, I've seen that before. Or, if you've got a hydrogen you don't want, it could take that and turn into carbonic acid, which is also a species I know exists. So, certainly hydrogen carbonate can be an acid or a base. This is methanol, which theoretically could give away that hydrogen, but it tends not to. It could also release this OH, but it tends not to. It, this is just very stable. It's a molecular compound, and so it's not very likely to release that hydrogen or that or the OH that would enable it to be an acid or a base. So if you like answer B, that's not crazy. This does have the parts necessary to be an acid or a base. It just happens in practice, this does not dissolve very well. This, on the other hand, is a hydrogen ion connected to a carbonate ion, dissolves nicely in water. It is much more reasonable to expect this to either give a hydrogen or take another hydrogen. Okay, I'm trying to think if there's other ways I could have explained that, and there probably are. If, if this one bugs you, get a hold of your instructor and you can talk it out. Uh, what do we have with this? If we're, if this is a reaction that they're suggesting, we know it's going to go away from the side that has the strongest acid and the strongest base on it. So our task, first of all, is to find our acids on each side. This has to be an acid because we see it losing a hydrogen and turning into sulfate. This must be an acid because we see it losing a hydrogen and turning into hydrogen phosphate. So the question is, which of these two acids is stronger? HSO4 or H2PO4? And the answer by a, by a landslide is HSO4. This is a much stronger acid. H2PO4 is like halfway down the second page, and this is one of the strongest weak acids there is. So the strongest acid is hydrogen sulfate ion. Its conjugate base is the sulfate ion. List five examples of substances that are amphiprotic. Amphiprotic and amphoteric both mean could be an acid or a base. And here's my list. And let's go uh, H2PO4 minus. Okay, and the pattern that I believe they want you to notice is all these things have hydrogen, that's what enables them to be acids, and all these things have negative charges, which, which enables them to be bases. If you put something like uh, water in your list, that is a good answer. Water can be an acid or a base, but it kind of messes up the pattern, because while water does contain hydrogen, it doesn't have a negative charge. So. You're right about this one, it is amphoteric or amphiprotic, but I think what they're trying to get you to say is that most amphiprotic substances have an H in them and a minus. NaHCO3 is an amphiprotic substance. Okay, so when this dissolves in water, it breaks up into sodium, who cares, that isn't an acid or a base, and hydrogen carbonate. This is the amphiprotic part. It has a hydrogen it could give away. It has a negative, meaning it could attract a hydrogen if it wanted. 
right? One reaction where it acts as an acid and one where it acts as a base. Okay, well, there's all kinds of ways you could get creative with this. I'm going to take some easy ones here. <laughs> Almost anything will act as an acid if you put OH next to it. Because if you're considering giving away a hydrogen, this is the best hydrogen acceptor ever. It will do a very good job of pulling that hydrogen off you. So HCO3 will give away a hydrogen and turn into carbonate. This will take that hydrogen and turn into water. Now if you want something to act like a base, put it with the best hydrogen donor ever. In this case, the H3O will give away a hydrogen, turn into water. This will gain a hydrogen and turn into carbonic acid. Are there other reactions? Yeah, dozens. But these are the quickest ones to write that I could think of. Put it with an extremely strong base, put it with an extremely strong acid.